Today I am going to tell you about a project I've been working on for the past few years, looking at how NKTs and macrophages interact in the neuroblastoma microenvironment. And let me figure out this complicated remote here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you a quick refresher on NKTs. I know Leonid did um, introduce them quite well earlier, but I'll give you a few refresher notes. So NKTs, or natural killer T cells, are a subset of innate lymphocytes. Um, they express an invariant T cell receptor uh, that recognizes glycolipid presented in the context of CD1D, and this differs from your prototypical T cell receptor, which recognizes peptide, as we all know. NKTs localize to the tumor site, and Leonid showed several years ago that NKT infiltration of primary tumors is associated with good outcome in neuroblastoma. These results were initially um, curious to us because we know that neuroblastoma cells do not express CD1D, uh, meaning that NKTs cannot directly recognize or interact with neuroblastoma cells. So a former postdoc in Leonid's lab wanted to determine what cell type NKTs were interacting with. So she stained primary neuroblastoma tissues for CD1D, shown here in red, and um, w for the tumor-associated macrophage marker CD86 shown in green, and she found that the only cell type in the macrophage that was expressing CD1D uh, was the tumor, or sorry, was the macrophage cell type. Additionally, she looked, uh, sorry, this remote is very complicated. Oh too complicated. All right, so additionally, she stained primary tumors for um, an NKT marker shown here in red and for the macrophage marker shown in green, and she found that NKTs tend to co-localize with the macrophages in the tumor microenvironment. So these data suggest that the NKTs exert their effect on neuroblastoma primarily through their interactions with macrophages in the microenvironment. Uh, more recently, Shahab's group was able to show that an inflammatory molecule, CD163, was associated with metastatic disease in neuroblastoma patients. And he showed this slide, I think, a few minutes ago. Um, but patients with uh, stage 1 disease, the more low-risk disease, uh, expressed low levels of CD163. And patients with stage 4 disease uh, have increased CD163 expression. And we were interested in these results because CD163 is a marker for the M2 subset of macrophages. The M2s are a suppressive subset of macrophages, and they're, they have pro-tumorigenic factors. And these data led to my hypothesis that NKTs mediate their effect on the neuroblastoma microenvironment through direct interactions with M2 macrophages specifically. So in order to test my hypothesis, I first wanted to see whether or not NKTs could recognize and kill either M1 or M2 macrophages. Um, so I started by isolating, uh, sorry, isolating monocytes from peripheral blood and polarizing them to either M1 or M2 macrophages using cytokine-conditioned media. I then uh, performed CTL assays by co-culturing either the M1 or the M2 macrophages with our NKT cells, along with the NKT activating ligand alpha-gal ser. So these resu results are shown by the red bar here. And we were a little surprised to find that the NKTs could recognize and kill M2 macrophages and not M1 macrophages. If we added a blocking CD1D antibody to this cold culture, we were able to inhibit the M2-specific killing. And when we initially saw these results, we thought, hey, we know exactly what's going on here. The M2s must be expressing high levels of CD1D, the M1s are expressing low levels, and that's why the NKTs can recognize M2s and not M1s. However, I did a lot of work trying to prove that there was differential expression of CD1D in these two macrophage subsets, and I could not prove it in any way that I tried. I looked at surface marker expression of CD1D by flow cytometry and saw no difference in CD1D between M1s and M2s. I looked at total RNA expression by quantitative PCR, and again, there was no difference. And on this sign that you can hardly see at all. Um, I looked at whole protein expression by quantitative Western analysis, and here we're looking at M1 and M2 macrophages from two different donors, so that's donor one and donor two, 
And oh, great, you can see it better now. And um, our positive control was a cell line overexpressing CD1D. And uh, again, you could see no difference in CD1D expression between these two subsets. So we were a little stumped at this point. We couldn't figure out why NKTs could specifically recognize M2s and not M1s if there was no difference in CD1D. So we started looking at a, um, a variety of other markers that were differentially expressed on M1s and M2s to try to figure out what was going on. And we wanted to focus on markers that are on molecules that played a role in lipid metabolism or lipid uptake or anything to do with lipids because we do know that NKTs recognize lipids. And we focused on the scavenger receptors. So scavenger receptors are highly expressed on M2s and not on M1s. They're involved in lipid metabolism. They can bind a wide variety of ligands. And this publication in 2012 showed that a particular scavenger receptor, CD204, also known as scavenger receptor A, uh, was required for the presentation of certain NKT ligands. So we wanted to see what CD204 was doing in our system. And we started by just verifying that CD204 expression was high on our M2 macrophages and not on our M1 macrophages. And then we set up CTL assays as before, where we cultured either M1 macrophages shown in black, or M1 macrophages shown in white, or M2 shown in black. Um, we repeated our system that we showed before, where we co-cultured them with NKTs, and the M2s are preferentially killed, the M1s are not. And if we added a blocking CD204 antibody to our cold culture, we were able to significantly inhibit uh, M2 killing. And we did not see a similar inhibition when we used our isotype control. Um, next, we expressed CD204 in our cultured M1 macrophages. And we found that when 204 was expressed on M1s, NKTs were able to recognize and kill these uh, 204 expressing M1s uh, in comparable levels to our M2s that we showed earlier. And if we added our blocking CD204 antibody, we were able to inhibit this uh, killing. So these data suggest that uh, NKTs are killing M2s. Uh, this killing is mediated by the expression of CD204 on these M2 macrophages. So what uh, we think is happening are, is that um, the M2s have an increased uptake of lipid antigens due to CD204 expression. They're then able to process the lipids, present them on CD1D, and they can be better recognized by NKT cells. So, Next, we wanted to see whether or not NKTs could polarize macrophages from the M2 towards the M1 phenotype. We know macrophages are highly plastic. They can very readily polarize from one subset to the other based on their environment. And so we set up a transwell experiment where we cultured macrophages in the bottom of the well. Then inside a 0.4 micron insert, we added NKT cells along with either an unloaded CD1D dimer, this dimer is unable to activate NKT cells, or we added an alpha-gal serre-loaded CD1D dimer. And in this case, NKT cells can be activated. Um, we cultured these cells in transwell conditions for three days, then we harvested the, the macrophages and assessed their phenotype. And here we're defining our M1 macrophages as HLADR high, CD163 low, and our M2 macrophages are CD163 high, HLADR low. And we are focusing on CD163 as our macrophage marker here because as Shahab has shown, it is very clinically relevant in neuroblastoma. So um, when we culture these macrophages in our transwell system with the unactivated NKT cells, we see that the macrophages retain their M2 phenotype. They're 163 high, HLADR low. However, in our um, transwell system where we add the activated NKT cells, the macrophages begin to take on a more M1-like phenotype with high HLADR and low CD163. Um, so these results suggest that the activated NKTs are producing some sort of soluble factor that's polarizing the macrophages towards M1. And in order to identify what that soluble factor was, we set up some blocking experiments. Uh, we focused on a couple of cytokines that we know are produced in large amounts by activated NKT cells, and we know they tend to be involved in macrophage polarization. 
And for these experiments, we're focusing solely on the expression of the clinically relevant CD163. And as I've shown you in a slightly different way on the last slide, when we cull culture the M2s along with the NKTs, the M2s begin to downregulate their CD163 expression. If we add the blocking interferon gamma antibody to our cold culture, we don't see any significant change in CD163 expression. It looks very similar to our um, normal cold culture. And if we add our blocking GMCSF antibody, we see that our macrophages are able to retain their high CD163 expression, suggesting that NKTs are mediating um, this polarization of macrophages mainly through their production of GMCSF. So, so far I've shown you a lot of in vitro work showing that our uh, NKTs can both recognize and kill M2 macrophages and they can polarize macrophages from M2 towards the more pro-inflammatory M1 phenotype. However, all of this work has been done in vitro, and we wanted to see whether or not NKTs could ex exert an effect on M2 macrophages in vivo. So in order to do this, we utilized our humanized neuroblastoma mouse model that Leonid introduced earlier. Um, so in this model, we take humanized NSG mice. These mice have been reconstituted with human hematopoietic cells, so they're expressing T cells, B cells, and monocytic cells. And we inject these humanized NSG mice with human neuroblastoma cell line, and we wait three weeks for tumor to develop. At this point, we adoptively transfer NKTs into these mice. We wait three days, sacrifice the mice, collect the tumor tissues for further analysis. And first we looked at the percentage of tumor-associated macrophages in these mice. And we saw no difference in macrophage percentages in our NKT-treated mice uh, compared to our tumor-bearing control mice. However, when we looked at the phenotype of the tumor-associated macrophages, we were really excited to see that in our NKT-treated mice, shown here in green, the uh, macrophages expressed much lower levels of CD163 compared to our tumor-bearing control mice, suggesting that our NKT treatment can uh, polarize these macrophages away from the M2 phenotype. So with that, I'd like to summarize what we've talked about today. Uh, we know that M2 macrophages are, are associated with metastatic disease and poor outcome in neuroblastoma patients. And I've shown you today that NKTs can recognize and kill M2 macrophages in vitro, and they can also polarize these macrophages towards the more pro-inflammatory M1 phenotype. I've also shown that adoptive uh, transfer of NKT cells can decrease the frequency of M2 macrophages, at least in our uh, neuroblastoma mouse model. And I'd like to quickly walk you through our working model of what we think is happening in the neuroblastoma microenvironment. So in the tumor, we have tumor-associated macrophages that are mainly of the M2 uh, phenotype. They're expressing suppressive factors and pro-tumorigenic factors. And they're also able to express lipid on their cell surface via CD1D. When NKTs infiltrate the tumor microenvironment, they're able to recognize uh, CD1D on the M2 cell surface. They become activated and can directly kill any M2 macrophages they're interacting with. These activated NKTs then go on to produce large amounts of cytokines, which can polarize any remaining macrophages towards the M1 phenotype. These M1, these M1 macrophages are producing pro-inflammatory factors uh, that we think can have an effect on tumor growth. And with that, I'd like to acknowledge all of the members of Dr. Menelitsa's lab and our collaborators, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to me today. Great.